Hello and welcome to this very special conversation and I'm joined by someone who has taken this uh, Ranji Trophy season by storm. Uh, scoring hundreds it has become his new passion. So let me welcome our guest uh, for this uh, for this video, Agni Dev Chopra. Uh, Agni, <laughs> thank you. what thank are you, you doing, know. man? Five <laughs> centuries in four, te- four Ranji matches. First cricketer to score uh, centuries in all of his first four Ranji matches. How has, how has been the journey so far? Uh, it's been it's been good and i'm i'm grateful and happy and and you know but i'm still not uh, not done yet you know the 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 goal was never to score four or five centuries the goal was always that our our team go into the elite division so i never i never thought you know at the start that i never put you know a goal that i have to score five or six centuries the goal was always that we have to qualify for the elite division so mm-hmm. yes i'm very happy with you know the way the last four games have gone but uh, the job's not finished yet we still have another game and then a semi final after that so so you know once we win the semi final then i'll feel better and then all my hundreds and performance will will you know it will mean much more but uh, yeah. but yeah so that's that's the that's that's the job that that is yet to be done Agni, of course, in India, it's not easy to be a celebrity child, uh, a family full of uh, full of celebrities. Your father is a noted, very famous uh, director, movie producer. Your mom, your mother is a renowned film critic. Uh, how has, how was your childhood like? Uh, was it surrounded by film stars uh, and, and all the movie stars, or or was it, where did this love for for cricket come? <laughs> you know, honestly, I've started playing cricket since I was seven or eight years old. I think that you know there was no there was no reason why I kind of went into it. It was just mm-hmm. something that I saw and loved as a lot of kids in India. I think you know when we won the two thousand and seven World Cup, I think I was nine mm-hmm. years old or something, and the T Twenty World Cup. That's when my my love for cricket increased even more. But mm-hmm. uh, but you know there was no reason to get into cricket. My parents have not done any sports ever. Nobody kind of told me ki ja ke cricket khel le. In fact, you know, when I was younger, my dad used to tell my mom, ye kiska beta hai, ye kisko kahan se aaya hai. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I think that it was something that I was always passionate about since I was very mm-hmm. young. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I was lucky enough that I knew my passion when I was, when I was that young. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I've been, been following it since then. And uh, Agni, of course, uh, you were part of Mumbai's age group cricket as well, scored runs there as well. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, but what uh, what made you switch uh, your state to at uh, that to in Mizoram? I think that you know th- I I've played for Mumbai since I was under fourteen. You know every age mm-hmm. group I've played, and I was part of the Ranji Trophy probables as well. Right. But I think that you know once I crossed age group cricket. I realized it was going to be very difficult to break into the Ranji Trophy team this year of Mumbai, mm-hmm. and uh, I I was actually part of the Pro- Ranji Probables last last season. And uh, right. it, in fact, in last year there were a few tours in July. You know, our, our Ranji Trophy team toured Bangalore and mm-hmm. another tour, but I I wasn't part of any of the tours. I wasn't selected, and I think at that point I I was very disappointed. But it was. It was kind of like a hard reality I had to confront, and at that point, I I was lucky because the Mizoram team actually held a selection trial in Bangalore. I think on the fifth of August, and and at the time I thought I'll go for it and do my best, and I was lucky enough to be selected, and it you know it it really worked out because the the timing worked out such that I got an opportunity to just go and play for them straight away, and uh, you know after that trial I knew that. That uh, it, it's you know it's the best opportunity for me to move my career forward by playing list A cricket and first class cricket because it would have been very difficult to to get that opportunity in Bombay. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, you know I was telling my father about you and and uh, why why I was telling my father because he has worked in Aizawl in Mizoram for twenty one years so he has a oh, lot wow. of connection uh, wow. there and, and, and he was he was smiling like someone is there scoring runs for Mizoram finally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and uh, Agni, of course, uh, like, uh, are there any future aspirations uh, to move back to a bigger cricketing states? Because sometimes when I see this argument on social media or talk to former cricketers, they say plate plate group is sometimes uh, very easy for cricketers who have moved from mm-hmm. Delhi, from mm-hmm. UP, from Mumbai, from bigger cricketing states. So, mm-hmm. are there any plans, future plans, to move back to uh, to uh, bigger cricketing states once you have you have stamped your authority in, in uh, Ranji Trophy? 
I think that you know right now I'm just trying to stay in the present right now my only goal is to take Mizoram to the elite division and then you know we will be playing all of the elite teams I think right. that uh, that you know even though people may talk about the quality of players in the plate division it's still first class cricket and you know we have beaten Bihar this year which is an elite division team in the past Meghalaya has beaten Mumbai I remember right. because we were all shocked when when that happened Right. You know, Pondicherry has beaten Mumbai. Now Pondicherry is yes. a much more established team, but this was a few years ago. So I think that even though people talk about you know the quality of cricket in the plate division, if a team that is in the plate division can beat a team like Mumbai, then I don't mm-hmm. think they have much of an argument because uh, you know they've they've lost to a team here. We beat Bihar yeah. this year, and uh, we almost beat Jammu and Kashmir this year. We were very close. Yeah. if i had hopefully stayed in in the game a little longer we only lost by 7 runs so i think that you know that argument always exists but uh, as as of now i i am very happy where i am i want my only goal for the next 2 weeks is to bring mizoram to the elite division and uh, you know we'll see whatever happens in the future i don't think i've really thought about next season or where i'm going to play or or anything as such because I'm, i'm as of now i just want to do well for this team because you know they've given me an opportunity and they've given me you know almost a second chance at 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 playing first class cricket so i'm i'm you know, i'm very grateful to them so i'm not really thinking about the future or 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 neck plans next season as such right now and and how big was the cultural uh, cultural difference uh, between mumbai and mizoram of course completely two uh, territories in india but when you interacted with their players uh, with with their coaches with mm-hmm. their uh, secretaries and the chairmen of of cricket boards how big a difference was was their culturally and, and the thought process of, of how they see cricket as well you know i think that that there's obviously a difference but you know the the main thing is that they're very good people and i think that you know even if there's differences in culture if you're just a, a good person if you're welcoming and if you're kind then you you know it's it you make someone feel very comfortable and you know i felt amazing coming here and playing here because the whole team the support staff you know our managers the even the the i think it was the president that i had we had, was with us uh, as well during mushtaq ali and they've all made you know me and the other two professionals feel like we're part of the team feel like very welcomed and uh, you know obviously there is like you know a language barrier and there is obviously a cultural difference but i think mm-hmm. that, you know when when you're part of a team then you're all kind of together trying to achieve the same goal and so it mm-hmm. honestly i thought it was going to be very difficult before i came mm-hmm. so it was one of the aspects that i was nervous about but you know once mm-hmm. i got here and once i got to know got to know the guys it it they really made me feel at home you know they taught me a few meso words here and there and yes. and i got to know a few things so now and you know it's you know it's really like a team now they they tease me and i tease them and you know now we've known each other since like september end of september when we started training together so uh, so you know it's it's really not been that difficult honestly and just a friendly tip mizo is a very easy language if you if you put some effort in 3 to 4 months you will you will get at least the basics right then when i first heard it it sounded very difficult like i had it, it is very difficult oh, when I you know. sound it so when you hear it first yeah. but slowly if you get a get accustomed yeah. to it, it yeah. you will find it easier yeah the, now it's it's making a little more sense now so uh, right. so yeah we are all getting a little better at it Uh, Agni, I was scrolling through your Instagram as well. Uh, how how influential is Kobe Bryant in your life, in your career? Uh, I mean, so he was uh, he was a big inspiration to me because in in two thousand and ten, my father was making a movie in the US, and mm-hmm. we were staying in Los Angeles at the time, and uh, I didn't know anything about basketball then. I didn't I had no I didn't care at all. It wasn't something I knew about. but one of our family friends was in los angeles as well and and you know he took me to watch a laker game at the time okay. and uh, this was the time when you know we were a championship team and i had no idea but i just went and watched it and you know everyone was just talking about kobe bryant and and it was crazy to go and experience him playing and and be in that atmosphere because as someone who loved sport it was just you know the most amazing thing and so mm-hmm. you know i've been a fan of his and a laker fan since 2010 and uh, you know there were a lot of tough times because our team wasn't that great for a long time 
before he retired and after he retired but uh, but you know i i he was always someone who who inspired me greatly and in, in his work ethic and and you know everything just kind of the amount of work that he'd put in the amount of dedication he had the loyalty that you know he stayed with the same team for 20 years mm-hmm. and, you know even though it's it's very difficult to do that there's a lot of tough times a lot of difficulties for 20 years your whole career to be with the same team but uh, but you know he he was he was really influential to me and and he continues to be even uh, you know even even after he passes and you know he's someone who'll always always inspire me to to keep working hard to keep you know putting in putting in the hours and to wake up early and work hard to stay up to go to the gym and everything so i think he's you know one of the athletes who's really inspired me and 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 my career for sure and who has been your cricketing idol growing up uh, i think it i mean cricketing idol for any indian of my age was always sachin sir always you know it it always had to be him but uh, for me it was all it was i mean sachin sir is obviously number 1 there's no comparison ever right. with him but for me it was always uh, uv paji yuvraj singh was someone who who kind of made me feel like i want to be like him because he was a left hander i'm a left hander and mm-hmm. and i have a very you know aggressive style of play and it was similar to his and and he was someone who when i saw playing and you know even when he hit those six sixes i was very young and and, and he was someone who who i immediately saw and i was like i you know i want to be like him so uh, so you know i mean sachin sir is always number one but i think uv paji was uh, was somebody who who i would have who i really idolized at the time and i really idolized mm-hmm. his game as well and uh, and yeah even when we won the 2011 world cup and you know he was so important in that win i think that that you know my the for me the indian cricketer or any cricketer i wanted to be like was always uv paji have you had the chance had a chance to interact with uv paji about I, I cricket have, i have met him yeah i have met him a couple of yeah. times and uh, and yeah you know it's 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 like kind of crazy because it, it doesn't feel like and you know any time you meet like your idols or someone you idolize it doesn't feel like real it feels like you know yeah. it's someone you watched on a screen since you were a kid but uh, you know i've gotten the opportunity to interact with him a few times and uh, and you know him him and my dad have spoke uh, spoken in punjabi you know they're both punjabis and yeah. i understand punjabi as well and and it, he really made me feel comfortable and i i didn't get the chance to you know talk to him about cricket because it was a very brief kind of interaction but mm. uh, but yeah it was it was pretty amazing to to meet him and and actually see like how his batting is actually his personality and how like flamboyant and open and and you know how he is his his batting is just a reflection of of who he is right so, uh, so yeah i was lucky enough to meet him a couple of times and any present cricketer that you would like to meet and pick brains of oh present cricketer i think i'd stay, say ben stokes because oh. i think you know another left hander i think i'm always you know attracted right. to left handers because i am one yeah so uh, you know i would have to say i i recently watched his documentary as well i think last month and and you know of course if you know i would choose someone like virat paji or or someone you know indian but i think i think that like uh, someone who i would love to just learn from is probably ben stokes because he's done some impossible things in uh, right. in cricket and he's and you know to have that kind of belief in yourself and that kind of ability and you know i you know after watching his documentary seeing where he came from the kind of difficulties that he had to go through uh mm-hmm. i would love to have the opportunity to to have a conversation with him of course uh, just to before we conclude this interview with me uh, about your father and mother the support they have given you from from day one when you have decided when you decided to pick up cricket uh, mm-hmm. like of course they come from a very very different uh, professional background mm-hmm. uh, one is a direct producer script writer one is one is a movie critic uh, but whenever you go through a rough patch or you went through a rough patch uh, how did their support what did they say you uh, to you know boost your motivation or your confidence uh, when you, when you were down i think that i mean you know the last few years have aside from you know this last few months have only been rough patches because <laughs> i was injured and i didn't do well and then you know i wasn't selected and and you know i think that the the main thing that they gave me and my younger sister as well was that they just gave us freedom to do whatever we want 
and i think that when you get that kind of freedom you feel empowered that you can actually do anything and you know something my dad always told us and actually his dad told him my dada ji was that you know aap sadak pe bhi mochi ban sakte ho but apne sadak ka best mochi banna so that was something that always he always told us since we were young you know so that was something that always kind of made me feel like i can actually do anything you know if tomorrow mm. i get up and say i want to you know i don't know be a musician he'll be like okay chalo you know let's start working at it he right. he would never ever try to 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 turn me into something i don't want to do so i think right. just giving giving me and my sister that kind of power was the biggest thing for us mm-hmm. and that kind of freedom i think that you know when times are difficult it's obviously uh, you know it's obviously great to have your family around you and the main thing is just to know that they're there for you and support you mm-hmm. because uh, you know as an athlete it, it's very lonely when you're not doing well and and right. nobody can really understand except maybe another athlete and it's it's still very difficult to kind of understand how you feel because uh, mm. you know it's it's especially with cricket it's a very difficult sport because you'll as a batsman most of the time you'll fail more than you succeed right. in just in general as a rule more often you can train as much as you like but most of the time you'll fail only and uh, right. and i think that that failure has really turned me into a much stronger person but mm. uh, you know in terms of my parents it was just that they were like my silent supporters there was no, really no need to kind of see anything or or any there was no like words of encouragement i just knew that that they were there for me and they were supporting me no matter what i wanted to do you know mm-hmm. so that that was the biggest biggest thing for me and some days uh, it's just their presence that that make you feel better yeah exactly yeah. exactly and 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 not even like their presence it was the the main thing was that my my parents taught me that it's okay to fail and you know yeah. they would make jokes about me failing or you know there was a time where two games i didn't play well or there was a time where i played two t20s and i got caught on the boundary and my dad was like fielder nahi dikhta hai kya tujhe and it's like so it's i mean it's not even that it's just like the fact that it's 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 okay to fail it's okay to to you know choose whatever you want to do and and the fact that they'll support me no matter what so i think that just just those those two small things made me feel like i can i can you know go out and and do anything i want to and uh, and i think that 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 you know as i said it wasn't like a particular word or a particular thing it was just that that kind of silent support that that made me feel like i can i can you know go out and and do whatever i want my final question uh, before we wrap this interview agni uh, you are 25 now so mm-hmm. what's your ultimate aim in in cricketing world what do you want uh, to achieve before before you can say okay i have succeeded in what i wanted to do i i mean i honestly don't think i'll ever say i have succeeded because i think mm-hmm. that over these over these past few years it's very it's you know it's difficult to run after success because right. sometimes success will be there sometimes it won't sometimes you can work as hard as you want but you will get out first ball you know so it and you know it's something that you know even my dad taught me from three idiots ki you know kabil bano kamyabi jhak maar ke piche aayegi so it it was it it's it for me it's never been about success it's of course my dream is to play for india i my dream is to next play in the ipl my dream is to play for india but i think that my when i was young my dream was always to play cricket you know when you pick up a bat it's never you don't pick up a bat thinking i'm picking this up because i want to play for india you know mm-hmm. it's just because i want to play cricket and be the best cricketer that i can be so right. i i think that that you know i'm i just want to work as hard as i can and in the next few years uh hopefully if i'm if i'm kabil enough then the kamyabi will come so i don't think i've i've ever judged it based on success i think when i was younger it it was only success for me and in cricket it's very easy you know you're either you either scored runs or you're not it's not like yeah. something like football where you know you'll have a okay game or mm-hmm. in cricket you score zero or you score 100 it's like black yes, and white you know yes. so uh, so for me before i used to just i used to write down my scores and i used to write down goals of of runs but that mm-hmm. was that was literally just chasing success and you know the more you chase it it keeps running away and mm-hmm. uh, and i think that for me that that's right now that's not kind of going to be uh, what what i what my goal is you know obviously 
I want to I want to make first my first goal is to get Mizoram to the elite division. Then right. after that, I I I'll see what the goal after that is. But uh, but yeah, I think that that I I'll I'll be happy as long as I've worked as hard as I can. And other than that, you know, we'll see whatever happens with God's yeah, grace. That's 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 what you want, as as Ms. Tony says. It's mm. all about the process. You don't think yeah. about the final product. Yeah, final exactly. Product. So yeah, so for me, of course, like I would love my next. The next step would love. I would love to play in the IPL, and uh, and you know, it's it's something that now every young kid obviously dreams of because we've grown up watching the IPL, and mm. uh, and and but you know, it's it's it's. It's not something that that I can I can say that if I play in the IPL, then I'm successful or mm-hmm. then I'll be happy. You know, then it's it, then it doesn't mean mean anything because you you I'm, I'm not, I never started playing cricket just to play in the IPL. You know, I just started mm-hmm. because I loved it and I loved the process. So I think that that that's what I want to focus on as much as I can. Absolutely, I think I think that's that's the best possible ending we could have uh, mm-hmm. for our interview. So thank you so much, Agni, for your thank time. You, thank you so and, much, and all the best wish, uh, wishes for your upcoming matches and the season. Thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it.